welcome back to Woodhill Park. Been quite busy, as you can see, things have moved on a bit. I've now managed to ballast the layout in this area and put in a lot of the infrastructure. So this video is to show you how I got on with the latest construction. Right, as I said in the last video, I'm now carrying on to do some more concrete slabs for under the uh, sheds and that. Also, I fancied raising up the uh, cable junction boxes so when I ballast they won't uh, get lost in the ballast plus they sit on a nice concrete plinth. Right, this is where I've, I've raised up the cable junction boxes so I just literally cut up small bits of pre-painted foam board They just look like this. Uh, and I just sit there with the cable junction boxes on top of them. And the sides of them look like concrete anyway, the foam, because it's grey. So it should all blend together. I mainly stick it down with copy decks and little bits with just super glue really. Here's a before shot and uh, I'll give you a, an after shot of the cable junction boxes on top of these bits of foam. I think it's an improvement myself. Just leave that to dry and then I ballast there'll be an age clear of the ballast. This this time I uh, pre-painted the foam board because I thought it'd be easier to just cut up what I want as I go with it already painted. So it's got a stippling effect. And it's it's all dry now, so I just cut what bits I want off it. But the only thing is, after it's become wet, it does curl up. So I put a weight on top and flat flat piece of wood on top of that, just to uh, get it to go flat again. I also got some plastic hard, roughed it up, painted that the same colour and stippled. So I'm ready to cut it to whatever size I want as I go. So and then it, all it will need is just weathering laying about with. So I've got loads of concrete and uh, I don't have to mess around painting it again.
Right, well that dries. Uh, I've used an uh, Evo stick in the end. Um, it's always a bit of an experiment really sometimes. Stuff don't take to this shiny plastic on the uh, Pico rails. But, uh, I mean the first time I did it I used super glue and it went alright. But this time it didn't seem to want to stay in place so I used Evo stick. But, uh, I need to hold that in place and while that's been held in place I'll show you obviously a bit of fine emery I use to rub up the concrete and occasionally I will clean the track if there's paint or a bit of glue or something I can't get off by just cleaning it with liquids and stuff but I also occasionally use a, a track rubber but it's not a track rubber it's a, it's a, a polishing rubber that you can buy. I don't like Pico ones, they're a bit more aggressive and you can get quite fine ones of these and as you can see my ones well worn so it actually stays with the track because it's got track lines in it. Now I bought a new one because that one's wearing out so and this I mean there's various names but at the moment there's a, a name called Garrison doing them and you get different grades, I mean, they're different colours. So I think the finest one is even finer than that, and it's a, a pink. But the grey one that I bought to replace my one what's wearing out is obviously grey. In, uh, in fact, I think I bought two, two fine ones. So, but they come in different colours. There's another colour, I can't remember what it is for a more coarse one. So you have to be careful and get the finest grades. But uh, the grey one is what I find is okay for it. And as you can see, my one's well worn, done a lot of work. But, uh, they're not too dear either, they're only about four quid. So you can get it, uh, get it from that big shop online. So, easy to come by and I think they're, they're quite handy should you get anything on the rails but the least you can scratch up the rails the better because you increase the surface area of the rail and that just adds to more tarnishing and oxidisation but so if you can keep them as smooth as possible without any scratches in them then you'll have less problems cleaning them I also use a liquid to clean them rather than uh, sort of track rubbers regularly and I don't use isopropyl alcohol either because that just takes everything away. What I use just uh, leaves a bit of a, a liquid on top but we'll get into cleaning track some other time but just so you know what I'm cleaning the track with while I'm painting and gluing, should I get any uh, PVA or other glues on the track? And I have to remove them with a the rubber. That's the rubber I use. Well, I forgot to say, if you do use a rubber, don't forget to vacuum it afterwards because you get bits of rubber migrating all over the place and they'll just be picked up in the loco and any oil or grease it will just mix and stick to them. So always vacuum when you've used it get rid of anything that's uh, remaining right time to remove the weights and just check it with a carriage with that. Now for a bit of weathering.
Right. A bit like, I suppose, if I was a woman, I'd say putting makeup on. But uh, you can wipe a bit off, like I did, with a little bit of a damp cloth. And that helps. But uh, that, that's about it. But, uh, all I need to do is put the, uh, the building on it now. Building on. And it's uh, all starting to come together now. I'm also having a bit of a play about with some fencing because I think the uh, the TMD won't wouldn't be entirely exposed to the main rails just in case somebody walked out by accident there's a fence to uh, at least remind them that there's fast trains the other side of it even though they work on the railway so I think it might be feasible to have a bit of fencing along there I've only put it up there temporary just to see what it looked like I think that would be pretty good myself.
shooting this just to test out my new lapel microphone to see if it sounds any clearer. Meanwhile, I'm shooting a bit of footage of the area I've just ballasted. Hopefully you can hear me clearer and a lot of my speech from now on will be clearer too. Right, it was a long job but I finally finished ballasting the layout at this point. The TMD is pretty much, much uh, fully ballasted now except for one bit up the end. It was a long, laborious job, but hopefully it will all dry and be worth it. We've got a fan up the end, which uh, I often use, which helps dry the ballast quicker. This works by moving the damp air that uh, sits above the ballast and stops the evaporation process. So if you move the damp air on, the air that fills the void then takes on more moisture and helps to dry it quicker. You know, otherwise you get like a damp, invisible cloud that sits over the ballast and it just takes longer to dry. So by shifting the air across the top of the ballast, you put uh, a fresh amount of air ready to take up more moisture. So by doing that, it speeds up the process of drying. So no heat needed, just air movement. And it does work. So I use it time and time again, and because it doesn't cost too much, because we're not talking about heating anything, we're just talking about moving air. Right, it's all pretty much done. Until the morning. Right, it's the next morning and the fan has been working blowing the moisture off the, the gravel or ballast and because of that this morning even though it's what is it only 10 degrees up here as it dropped overnight the, ba the gravel or ballast is now hard to the touch on the surface it probably is not fully dry underneath but at least it is dry to touch on the surface so should you clean the track it shouldn't move anything around but because it's a little bit softer it will make it easier to pick out from around the points and clear the rails of the, any wheels for the train so that's what I'm going to do. There's uh, only really one way to clean the track properly after you've been gluing, is to get the, the PVA off the, the rail heads. You've got to use an abrasive rubber really, but uh, I do use these blocks that I mentioned earlier, as they're finer and they do less damage by not scratching the, the rail heads too much. <coughs> also you need to carefully remove <coughs> excuse me any ballast between uh, the uh, point sections so before you start sort of forcing them you need to remove any ballast that may be jamming them carefully. Uh, dustmen are here or recycle men we call them now throwing all our bottles around in the street but 
hopefully you can hear me still above them but uh, yeah you need to free these up very carefully they, uh, if you force them you end up breaking them and then you've got to replace the whole point which you know for all the work you've done is just a total waste so treat them very carefully as you're freeing them up but everything should go all right as long as you don't push it <laughs> unless it's free and that's nice and free now but as the gravel or the ballast I keep saying gravel the ballast dries even deeper and becomes harder because it's still a little bit soft even though it's it's hard on on the surface then uh, you can revisit the point and see if you can clean it up any any better which you usually can and make it freer than what it is now but it's it's moving nice and smoothly really so it's fine so I'll just carry on cleaning the, the rail heads it's easy to see where you've been and where you haven't because uh, the PVA sort of <coughs> excuse me again it's cold up here it's thickening my voice up <laughs> thickening my throat um, yeah it's easy to see where the PVA is and isn't as you rub it you, it goes black so you can see if you missed a bit but uh, once you've done all this you then have to coat it in something to stop it uh, oxidizing again because you take any coating of anything off the rails when you do this so that's a job for later stop them going black I also forgot to say don't forget to clean between the check rails because uh, this will make your trains come off quicker than anything else so make sure between the uh, check rounds there's no ballast because it does end up washing there even if you didn't put it there but, uh, also any uh, bits on the sleepers that are unsightly you don't like just they'll pop off quite easy at the moment Whoops. Better if I put the camera facing it. So, yeah, just make sure these are all clear and uh, the points, obviously, as I said, are free of anything. And make sure there's no PVA glue between the blades and points, it usually just flakes off. Um, Also, there's little contacts either side on some points you might want to clean those as well they will definitely stop the point having a nice smooth action if you don't clean around them as well a lot of it's not intentional a lot of it gets washed there as you're gluing you don't you know go out your way to put ballast there but it does make it a bit of a pain cleaning up things but it's worth doing it rather than ruining the point and once you've done it you won't need to do it again not unless you re-ballast anything but chances are you'll just touch up here and there where you've got bits missing but, you know, it's not looking like there's that many of them so far which is good but you know that's because you end up covering it in PVA glue if you don't then when you vacuum it off it'll just pull out lumps and you end up reballasting anyway so sometimes it's worth maybe overdoing it with a PVA even though it means cleaning up but you know everything is stuck down properly and you're only going to have to do it once but, uh, it's coming along nice, nicely but it is a fiddly job and I'll be testing it out later on
bit a bit amiss of me but uh, I forgot to do one length of track so rather than PVA it I thought it's only a small amount you wouldn't normally use it but uh, I used uh, a WWS flowering spray which is very similar to PVA but it penetrates well on the gravel but it's rather expensive to use for gluing your gravel down in big areas it's all right for a, a small area and uh, I just put it in an empty sort of glue container I've got here and it's very easy to dispense then that and some alcohol again and uh, this bit's done now but as I say rather stupid of me I miss it but there's so much I've been doing it uh, wasn't until I touched it and noticed the uh, ballast move that I hadn't done it so these are this sort of thing is ideal for just touching up really but as I say you wouldn't want to use it all the time because it's way too expensive this is what I guess I mean by looking like the tide's gone out you know once you've used the PVA on the fine ballast even with alcohol it displaces it and moves it around and makes it look like a, a muddy area that the tide has retreated from so not very keen on this medium grade ballast stays where you put it generally so it's time to try out my new tripod see if I can get some shots lower down closer to the track with this new tripod of mine so going to give it a go right so far so good the tripod enables me to get really low and uh, the shot you're looking at is much better than my other tripod now quite level with this upper level of my layout so I'll move the uh, <coughs> class 121 and see what it looks like put the lights on first And move her off slowly.
that's that's just about it for now thanks for joining me hope you enjoyed the video hope it was some help um, ballasting can be quite a boring job but rewarding at the end i've got a bit more to do to the TM tmd i've got uh, some background sort of hedging and trees and landscaping to do and also i've got to weather the track which uh, I'll probably put in the next video or whatever. I've now got a, a new lapel mic, so hopefully you can s sort of hear me a bit better than normal. And uh, it sounds a bit more of an improvement. But I still fluff my words, even uh, even a new mic. But uh, hopefully bear with me and hopefully I'll get better at it. Talking to cameras is a bit daunting sometimes, but uh, I'm slowly getting used to it and uh, that's about it thanks for watching thanks for subscribing any comments please leave them in the comments section any ideas will be uh, gratefully received and uh, see you next time thanks very much for watching bye for now